Hi, welcome to season 2 of Learn JMeter series. In this inception episode, we are going to learn about CSV dataset config. Before we jump into this uh, CSV dataset config, in the first uh, season videos, we have learned about uh, HTTP samplers, uh, introduction about JMeter, some config elements, stuff like that. And starting now, we are going to learn uh, somewhat uh, additional concepts, intermediate concepts or basic concepts, you, you could say. Uh, CSV dataset config, uh, regex extractors, assertions, things like that. But before we uh, deep dive into this uh, CSV, uh, first we have to understand why there is a need of this element. So basically, CSV dataset config will help you to inject multiple sets of data to the request so that you can validate your response uh, on your business flow, etc. But why we need to test with multiple sets of data? So that is the another question which will come to your mind. So assume that you have an application, say banking, and you are planning to release it to 100 uh, users. And 100 users, they are trying to launch your application and they are going to do some transactions. But 100 users input will be different from each other. Basically, uh, no data will be repeated again and again in your database because every user is unique. Their IP address, their browser preference, uh, their network speed, uh, the time and uh, date where they when they will access the application, everything is unique. So it is our responsibility as a performance tester, we would like to test our application with multiple sets of data so that uh, you will be measured the uh, performance in a right way. For example, the caching, if you're using the same data again and again, the responses or the data might be cached in the back end and uh, the performance will be better but when it goes to production uh, when the users uh, the data is unique then your application performance might be uh, vary than your test environment so just to avoid any surprises and just to simulate the real world uh, situation in your uh, test environment you have to you must use the different sets of data in JMeter, there are a couple of ways you can uh, uh, inject the data from uh, the uh, file. So you can use a CSV read function or you can use the string from file or read this data set or CSV data set config. So there are multiple ways, but let us begin with very uh, simple one, CSV data set config. So how we can add this element to your test plan? So just to add just right click on the uh, third group or test plan and uh, go to config element and the very first element you can see csv dataset config and by default uh, it will set some of the properties uh, for example it will set the recycle on eof end of file uh, is true stop thread on eof uh, false things like that but uh, yeah we are going to see anyway uh, in detail so very first thing you have to do before you uh, start working with the CSV dataset config is you have to identify the request you will be working. So in which request you are sending the data. So in this case, it is a very simple uh, pet store application as you know, it's petstore.octoperf.com and uh, this business flow, what it will do is it will just launch the pet store it will uh, go to the store, main store link, and then it will do a quick search. So if you see the keyword uh, here, the keyword parameter, it could be like a fish, or it can be a cat, it can be any uh, pet name. So first we have to identify the type of test data you will be injecting, and you have to prepare the test data in the form of a CSV file, or text file, whatever the uh, supported format, you can just prepare it. So basically in a project, uh, you'll be working with a development team or a functional testing team, or there might be a dedicated team for the test data management. So either you can generate the test data by yourself, or you can contact the relevant team uh, to extract the data for you. Or if you have a database access, you can extract it, and then you can uh, scramble the data so that you don't use the uh, actual data in your test application. So there are multiple ways. So that is beyond the scope of this video, but uh, as a, uh, the whole gist is you have to prepare the test data. You have to 
have a valid uh, test data file so that it will uh, fetch it from the file in the runtime. And another uh, thing you have to do is you have to map the file uh, in the CSV dataset config. So here the first uh, field is file name. So if you click on the browse button, uh, you can see I have already prepared the uh, pet search.csv. So I have to map it to the uh, file name. So this path can be relative or absolute, but whenever you are working in the uh, distributed mode, so the, the whichever the server the test plan is executing, that server will have the access to the uh, file name. Basically the file name should be present in the server wherever it is running. So there is another thing you have to take care. And another uh, important uh, aspect is uh, make sure uh, it, it has some valid uh, test data. For example, it cannot have some uh, new lines in between uh, uh, or some, um, some of the uh, you are not escape. You are not using some escape character, something like that. So whenever uh, uh, the test data has some of the conflicts, then it will not inject properly. So those things you have to take care while preparing the uh, test data file. So here uh, I'm using the full path. So instead, what I can do is uh, I can just put the uh, relative path dot slash the folder name and the put search dot csv. So this also will work. And the important aspect is the variable names. So the variable names can be uh, included in the element or it can be included in the uh, CSV file. So what I'm going to do is I'm, I usually have the variable names in here. So the variable name can be P underscore uh, name and ignore first line. So whenever you use variable names, uh, in the element, then uh, uh, try to set this uh, parameter to false. So ignore first line false. If it is ignore first line is true, then you should have this variable name in the CSV file. So let me open the uh, CSV file. So this is my uh, CSV file here. So copy this, just I'll open this. Okay, so this CSV file has five data, angelfish, cat, dog, bird, bulldog. And uh, so I configured variable names as p underscore name and ignore first line is uh, true. So which means the first line will be ignored. First line is angelfish. So we should not in, uh, in ignore this line. So whenever you use the variable name here, it should set to false. But when you set to true, you can just cut this and you can uh, paste it in the uh, first line. So now whenever uh, you want to refer something, you have to open this file and to see the variable name. So, th so that is why I don't want to uh, embed my file name, uh, the variable name here. So instead I will embed here and I'll set to false. And delimiter, if you have multiple columns, uh, you can delimit uh, your data. You can separate the columns using the character comma or you can use uh, slash T. So slash T stands for uh, tab. And allow quoted data uh, false uh, because we are not uh, going to use any uh, quoted uh, data here. So quoted uh, data is enabled means uh, the value may be enclosed in the double quotes. So if you want to, uh, if, if your test data has double quotes, then you have to uh, use the double quotes to cover that uh, uh, character again. So that is uh, false uh, here, but we are not, I'm not going to use any uh, quoted data. And recycle on EOF. EOF stands for end of file. So whether you want to recycle on EOF, yes, because I have only five uh, rows here. Once it reached the end of the file, then I have to reuse it again. So to reuse it, uh, recycle on end of file uh, is true. And stop thread on end of Whether I want to stop the thread on EOF, no. I don't want to stop my test. I want to continue. So we have to set to false. And sharing mode is all threads, which means the test data uh, will be uh, shared among all the threads. So the file opening uh, will happen uh, only once. And uh, uh, 
the data will be picked uh, uh, in an order which will uh, it in which the order is picked up basically so basically you have some uh, say 10 threads and the 10 threads uh, will try to access the uh, data here and in which order they pick in uh, uh, the data from the file the order will appear in the view results tree so just to uh, we will uh, execute this so that you can understand better so what we can do is now uh, just copy this variable name and go to the request where you are going to replace and uh, enclose with a dollar symbol a curly braces and the variable name and uh, close curly braces and a thread group uh, what we are going to do is we are going to just run it with uh, two loops and hit save and let us execute okay now uh, loop one is done and loop two and if you expand search you can see the keyword is uh, angelfish and the loop two is uh, uh, cat so this is the order it appeared in the uh, csv file but now what i'm going to do is i'm going to put 10 so what will happen is it will uh, uh, take the value angelfish cat dog bird bulldog and then again it will take angelfish again cat dog bird bulldog so it will repeat because our end of file is uh, stop thread on end of file is false and recycle on end of file is uh, true so if you change uh, if you change this uh, property then the step uh, the execution will stop but some of these properties can be changed in the uh, properties file okay now the, our uh, iteration uh, 10 times uh, is done so if you see the last one it is a bulldog and if you do if you see the uh, fifth one one uh, two uh, three four five this is the fifth one and see here bulldog and this also bulldog so the loop uh, the count is uh, two basically basically two times the whole sets has been repeated now what i'm going to do is i'm going to change this to uh, say uh, two and the number of threads is two which means two threads to look on this two so totally four times it will execute and we will see which uh, data uh, will get is getting picked up so okay the thread one this is thread one angelfish it has picked up and in the uh, thread two loop one is cat so angelfish and cat but in the loop count two dog it has picked up and he, this should be bird so now you can understand right so the order it picked up is based on uh, when the thread is reaching the line in the file then it will get picked up and it will get uh, injected in your request so uh, this particular uh, knowledge will come by practicing it and uh, by trying different modes uh, definitely you can understand but this is the whole gist is uh, you have to prepare your uh, csv file you have to add the name and you have to give the variable name here and you have to configure the uh, recycle on eof true and stop thread on eof is false and by default sharing mode is all threads but you can uh, change the sharing mode sharing mode means the sharing of the file uh, which can be uh, set to uh, current thread group uh, or current thread or the uh, identifier so all thread means the file is shared between all the threads and if it is a current thread group means each file is opened once for each thread and uh, for current thread means uh, each file is open separately for each thread so it depends on the context uh, which uh, mode you want to use but by people uh, by default people go with uh, all threads mode so i hope uh, this video is pretty useful uh, please uh, subscribe to qa insights for more such videos and thanks for watching uh, please stay safe thank you